The Test Studio has many settings, but one of those settings that gives you a lot of flexibility for reusing your test across different phases of your deployment is base URL. You'll find the project settings on your project tab toolbar at the very right of the toolbar is the settings. And down here in the recording menu options, you'll have an option that called base URL. Now base URL gives you the ability here to specify the root server address that you want to uh, have Test Studio recognize. So by setting this in the project settings, I'm setting it up so that when I hit record, if Test Studio recognizes this address, uh, it will section it off into a base portion of the URL and then a navigate portion of the URL. And what does that do for me? That actually sets me up so that later on in my test lists most often, I can actually use the same tests across the different environments. So this might be a demo environment. We might have a staging environment. We may have a QA environment, a production environment. Test Studio is designed so that you can reuse your test across all those environments. And that's really accomplished here by using base URL. I'll also point out there is a link here to go directly to the documentation on this topic. Here you can see those recording options. You can also see some details about base URL. And further, there's even a link to another article that goes specifically into running a test against multiple environments and using base URL. Now, you can use base URL from a project setting. You can also set that at the test level. If we come back to a particular test like this one, you can see that it's already got my project setting set up here, but that can be modified here at the test level. And let me take you through what it would look like now if I was to, let's say, re-record this navigate step. So I'll just copy that uh, URL right out of there. We'll put the recording marker before this since I just took the navigate step away. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit record, throw that URL in, choose my browser that I want to record from, and I'm going to hit record. Now, as I navigate to this site and the recorder is attached, we'll notice back in Test Studio that it's stored the navigate to slash blazer dashboard dash app sign in, right? Slash sign in. It's automatically recognized my base URL portion and segmented that out for me and left behind in the navigate portion uh, so that it can be appended on whatever base URL I might choose. As you can see, this can completely be modified here at the step level, but this automatically happened for me because I set it at the project level. And then when I went to that address, Test Studio recognized it, automatically segmented it for me, which means now when, I, when I'm ready for my test lists, I can approach this test list and actually change this setting here at the test list level. You'll notice on the web tab, we have a base URL setting here. So this is where we can basically swap out the base portion of the URL and have these same exact tests run against production, QA, staging, or all those different environments without having to have multiple tests for each. This really starts a lot of times from the settings of the project in the recording process and ultimately resulting modifying the settings in the test lists so that you can take potentially a list of 200 tests and run them against all of the different environments. Uh, further, you can see here I have two test lists that are actually exactly the same. They have the same tests in them. Uh, however, the uh, difference here is that they have two different names and in those settings they have two different base URLs. So this allows me to have lists of tests that are ready to fire against the different environments at a, any point in time, uh, all just because of the base URL settings and the reuse of tests across different environments. Also, one more setting in the project settings that I'll point out under the recording is our compare mode. I typically have my compare mode set to full path. However, you might find the default set to full path in query. Uh, again, the link that below here will take you to the documentation describing what all of these does for you. But essentially what it does is it compares the URL of the page that you're recording against versus the one that you're executing against. And how specifically or how exactly do you want to make that comparison? 
some of the basic ideas are using the title of the page. We might actually just want to make sure that the title of the page we recorded against versus the one we're executing against is the same. That may be just enough. The base URL is another option. If you wanted to focus in on that and use that as the comparison, you could certainly do that as well. And the full path is a part of the URL that contains the path, but not the query. The query being the part that comes after uh, a question mark that might be dynamic in many cases. So in most cases, we want to use full path to ignore any dynamic query because that may cause duplication in your elements. And what you'll see if that duplication is taking place is page node. And this is, as you can see here in the uh, elements repository here, this is the page level. And as you can see, you might see like a duplicate page. Now these two are actually two different pages. The way I can tell that is over here on the right. When you click on the uh, page here, you'll see the properties panel will show the properties for that page. And here we can see that compare URL is actually the dashboard, whereas this one is actually the issues page. So don't be fooled, it really comes down to the URL itself. Uh, the page title in this case looks to be the same. So in that case, I probably wouldn't want to use the page title or if I want it to just be generic, I could use the page title. 